This is a video I've had a number of requests for. Uh, a lot of people have had trouble with stripping their screws or not knowing exactly where to put things when they open up the laptop. So I'm just gonna go through step-by-step -step of how to safely disassemble the Motel 14, as well as how to do the upgrades. Uh, I'm reaching across from the other side of the counter here, so it may be a little awkward for me. Hopefully I don't you know, strip anything out or mess up because I'm reaching across, but I wanna make sure that you have the best view that my phone can provide. So just a few starter things on tools. I highly recommend using a, an electronic screwdriver set. So it doesn't matter necessarily how fancy it is as long as it's good enough quality. But the main thing about it is, so this is your standard tech screwdriver and you'll see how important it is that it has this swiveling motion. So I put pressure down on the top with my hand and then twist the middle. And that's how you're safely going to get things apart without stripping stuff is by maintaining that constant pressure pushing straight down on the top. This set is an Aurea set. It's a really cheap one off Amazon that has high recommendations and reviews. Uh, so yeah, you don't need to do anything fancy. I have an older iFixit set that I use at work, but I use this inside the house and it is, honestly, it's just as good. I think I actually kind of like it better than my other one that was four or five times as much. So yeah, just going beyond what kind of screwdriver you want to use to make it easier on yourself. The correct bit for this laptop, a lot of people would think it's Philips 1.0 or 1.5, uh, as people living in the United States were very familiar with using that standard. So for laptops like this that are built in Taiwan, it's very common for them to use Japanese standard. Uh, a lot of Asus laptops use Japanese standard, uh, all kinds of them. So it's, it's, uh, this one is actually J double aught or J zero zero. And that is the size you want to uh, use. They actually, the more, uh, the more zeros, the more, the smaller it is. So in my set, this is the second to smallest one. I have double lot and then triple lot, and that's as small as it goes on this one. Um, and then from there, when they increase up, they go J1, J2, so on and so forth. So that's the driver you're going to want to use to not strip these out. A lot of people have talked about stripping their systems. Uh, I've opened this thing, I think, six times now. And no, guys, it's not just because I had to keep proving to people there's no second RAM slot. It was because I tested with another drive. Uh, you know, I uh, did a number of, I repasted the heat sink. So I had reasons most of the time to pull that out. It wasn't just me being neurotic and thinking somehow I was wrong and crazy and hoping against hope. No, it wasn't that. But I have yet to strip out my screws. So... That all being said, and us ready to go. Oh, and finally, the other thing in this kit that you're absolutely gonna want is a, what this is called a spudger. Uh, you may hear it called many funny things, plastic pry bar, doohickey, whatever. It is actually called a spudger. And this guy is a 45 degree splitting spudger. So it is designed to go in edges like this and pop things up. That's gonna be a really useful thing to have so you don't risk breaking or bending any little tabs here. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna press down with my right hand, turn with my left, boom, that screw is coming right out. There's one. And then we go diagonally across. Now the reason I'm doing this, this isn't super important because this is a magnesium bottom and it's flexible, but just going like that rather than doing all one side, if you just start going down one side and that starts lifting up, it's putting more strain on the other side. So just corner to corner to corner. And this is, you know, once again, this is not one of those things that is absolutely essential, important. It's more just always practice good methods, and less things will break. Ooh, the magnetism's wearing out on this bit. That's the one thing about cheap screwdriver sets. Is they often have just like this magnetic coating. Ooh, I heard a click there. Click is bad. If you hear it clicking, you're not straight up and down or you're not putting enough pressure on it. That's how you strip. That's the sound of the teeth jumping to the next slot. Come on, magnet. Don't do this to me. <laughs> there we go. Got it with the fingernails. So yeah, the magnetic coating has worn off the tip of this, whereas it's not a magnetic alloy like a nicer one. So that's, that's your thing. So with this laptop, it has tabs along the bottom. And along the, well, I guess you, you decide what's the bottom and the top, but it has tabs along both of these sides and then screws here and no tabs. So 
it's easier to both pull up and put back in if you start, let's see here, find a place. I like to find a place where it's like if, if on its own, it lifts a little bit at first. There we go. And just be slow and careful. Like I'm not usually this quite this careful um, when I do this because you know I, I usually am familiar with what material it is and what it can actually take. There we go. And some, you know, when you get the first one, you'll see a little bending and you might feel a little nervous. But when you slide this guy in, like, and use this one, the 45, and slide it along, it's very unlikely you're going to break a tab. It is designed for this. So we're all loose. This guy just comes straight off, no problem. Okay, here we are inside. So uh, I mentioned in one of my other videos that I started touching stuff without pulling the battery off. And my hands were shaking because I was irritated. And so it was just all kinds of bad. Don't do that. Disconnect the battery. So this guy, battery. This right here, this will the only wire coming off of it. That's your battery connection. I'm going to use the spudger here, and I'm going to actually put my hand on the top of the battery rather than resting on anything else. And I'm just going to start wiggling this thing end over end until it starts to come out of there. And then if you're brave, I mean, there's not really... Actually, there's so there's not a lot of high voltage capacitors anymore in laptops. Like I got one over here. Uh, yeah, there's only a couple things in here that you really shouldn't touch, and they're not going to shock you that bad. Just letting that out. So, if you want to be ultra safe, after you have disconnected the battery, you can open it up, hold down the power button for a second, and that is going to drain any leftover electricity that could potentially harm you. So now we are as safe as we can get. So, I'm going to show removing the primary drive just in case you want to know. Uh, it's not, I, I don't actually, I'm not replacing that or upgrading it at the moment. I'm actually not replacing or upgrading anything. So, these are actually downgrades. This is a 128 gig NVMe, so it's actually a little faster, but it's only a 128. And this is a 4 gig DDR4-2400. These actually I pulled from another, another system, a pretty low-end system I have, just because they're the right type, so I can demonstrate here. So I'm just doing a dummy installation removal. These aren't my real parts that I'm gonna use, just demonstrating. So if you have really good eyes and you can read these labels, you know, that, that's what's up. So, this screw right here, this holds it in. This is our primary drive, which is an M2 SATA. Boom, you'll see it pops up like that. Now, you should use like a magnetic screw dish is a good idea to put all your screws in. But one thing that you will notice about me is the more familiar you get with stuff, the more sort of lackadaisical you are about some things. You just kind of scatter things around and you remember where they are in your head. And that's no problem. So it just pulls straight out like I demonstrated. Once that screws out, it comes out real easy. It's actually not possible to install one of these upside down. This tab over here that has four pins is slightly narrower than this one here that has six on the other side. So you actually can't stick it in like that. It won't fit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's almost impossible to install your uh, uh, M2 drive backwards. You, you would have to use a lot of brute force and it would be really obvious you were doing the wrong thing. So you look under here and you know, just I, I really want to leave this alone, but uh, just because people keep thinking it and hoping against hope that somehow you can stick a RAM slot or a RAM stick in here once the NVMe drive is out. That's, I mean, these don't even line up. The edge of this bracket would be in the way. This screw mount for this guy would be in the way. You would never lay a RAM stick down on top of the sound card, hard drive controller, these, these chips right here. Uh, because, you know, depending on how it goes, if this was, if this was a transverse slot, then the memory blocks would be facing downward, resting directly on this chip. So it's just, no matter what you think, no matter what you hope, that is not the case. This is only a spot for a hard drive. There is no possible way you can stick RAM here. But it's a perfectly good space for a hard drive because as you can see, there are none of the uh, major circuitry is on this side. So we're going to stick this guy back in here because this slot is only for that drive. Same method in reverse. We just, it sticks in there real easy. Like it's very easy to tell when it's in all the way. And then it should line right up with that screw hole. Boom, goes right back in there like that. 
So to add a second drive right over here. So, uh, you know, a confusion people might have this ribbon cable. This is actually to connect uh, for these ports over here. It has nothing to do with the drive. The drive sits on top of it. And once again, because there's nothing on that side of the drive that's going to be putting anything out, this one's actually covered with a sticker. Um, it, it's, it's fine. You don't have to worry about sharp edges on this, rubbing on this cable. You can just put this down right on top of that ribbon cable. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's funny, the ribbon cable actually acts like a little bit of a brace against the back of the drive, you know, so it's, it's like held down by the screw, but it's sort of like, you know, giving it some support so it's not just bowed between the screw and the port. So, same method, hold it down from the top, twist in the middle. There we go, NVMe drive installed. So, uh, I'm not going to demonstrate turning it on and showing this up there. You don't have to install drivers generally for new hard drives and RAM. You do, uh, you generally, like Windows now will pop up and tell you to initialize a new drive, but just in case it doesn't, you can just go into uh, either computer management. There's a number of places within Windows. If you type into the search bar, initialize or add drive, it will come up with the stuff you need. So it's really not, if your drive doesn't just automatically populate and give you windows to tell you it's there, it, it is really, that's that's not something you need to worry about. If you just like type in new drive, Windows is actually pretty good at helping you these days. So yeah, no drivers, nothing else required. This is now installed, it's good to go. Um, RAM slot, so we pull up this shield. I actually don't need to do that. I could have re reached under and grabbed these tabs. But these tabs, you just pull them out to the side, and when you do, the RAM stick will flip up on its own, making it easy to grab, and it just pulls straight out like that. So let's assume that this is not a four gig stick, but is instead a 16 or a 32 and is an upgrade. Just do the exact reverse, and it's, it's safe to touch everything in here right now. There is no, ain't no power with the battery disconnected like that. So there's all, once again, there's only one way you can put this in. This side, there's way less pins than that side. It'll only go in like that. There's only one slot in this laptop. It, uh, you know, it can help to like kind of brace yourself. Again, let me make sure I'm putting this in. Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> I got stuck on the adhesive on the bottom of the um, <laughs> the cover. But yeah, so it can only go in one way. Just push it in until it's all the way in. And if these tabs line up so that they hook on the little notches there, it's in all the way. It's perfect. If these go in all the way, it sits flat. Boom, you've done it. You have installed a new RAM stick. So I'm just going to pop these back out of there because this is actually not an upgrade for me. Take that out. Put that back in. And I'm gonna pull this drive because I actually it's the boot drive for another system. So I don't want it to try to like boot Windows off of that system, which is Intel based and has all different drivers and these days, Windows, I actually put a <laughs> Windows install, I put a hard drive from another computer inside a Mac Pro, my old Mac Pro 3.1, and it booted. So Windows will just about boot on anything. It's not the like, remove. But anyway, it might get unhappy if I stick this other boot drive in here. So boom, they're back out, back to the way they were. Uh, always remember to put screws like this, this retaining screw, back in if you remove something, because it stinks to not have them when, if you ever do put something back. And I mean, these are standard screws. All of these screws can be ordered or purchased or they're not hard to come by. But it stinks having to go find a Japanese standard screw, just one, because you foolishly didn't put it, uh, something back for no reason, because you removed the drive and didn't think of it. So yeah, always remember, if you got extra screws, even if you've already put it back together, you know, take it apart again and figure out where they go and put them back in, because you're gonna regret it excuse me oh my goodness when you need those later so we are done here um you want to make sure before you put it back together obviously got a little fold in here let me stick that wire up in you don't want these wires to rub if these break uh the laptop won't work anymore it won't turn on and uh you'll have to fix the wire before you can get connection but just gently gently stick that connector back in there okay now we're ready. The computer would boot right now with the bottom off. No biggie. Uh, it's, it is all back assembled. So this guy goes on the other way. Let's not put it on upside down. So in order to put this guy back on without putting any strain on anything, 
key to just pop those tabs back in first on the top and the bottom, rather than screw the screws in first and force it, the tabs in like that. That's no good. That's that's a way to strip stuff off because they'll be they won't be perfectly even. So I'm gonna go back, reverse order. Ooh, clicking bad. Oh, and I also do a little trick. You'll see I hold the screw like that. It's just because my magnetism's wearing out on these bits. They would hold just fine if they were if they were higher quality. So yeah, your mileage may vary on how much you want to spend, but if you're someone who does computer projects a couple times a year, you may never wear the magnetic co uh, coating off of cheap screwdrivers. Whereas, yeah, I tear computers apart all the time. Like when I'm bored, I just start tearing some of my computers apart. So it is, it's, I've probably used these a few more hours than they're maybe intended for the price. That's all I'm saying. I'm just being real gentle on these corners because it goes real deep. It's a very deep socket on these corners. Do, do, do. Oh, and the weirdest thing about these screws is the thread lockers. Oh, goodness, that was a bad one. So pay attention and be careful to how hard I'm turning. The thread locker on these is brown, so it actually looks like your screws are rusted, but they are not. It's just weird brown thread locker. <laughs> it's just kind of gross looking, but hey, it seems to work. Okay. And if you hear like one or two clicks there at the end, that's fine. I mean, you just, you jump to slot with one of the teeth, but it's not, unless you keep pushing hard and grinding against it, you're not actually stripping it out. It just hopped up for a second because you were twisting harder than you were pushing down. It's a lot like using the drill if you're familiar with that. Okay. Boom. We're all together. Solid. No wobbliness. Flip her back over. Oh yay, none of it scratches, it's just dirt. Magnesium, I love magnesium like that. The nice thing about magnesium is generally it's not painted. This should just be magnesium that's like they've put, they've put something in it to make the alloy this color or like mix some sort of pigment. So you dent it and it's still gray underneath usually. I love that about it. Um, but yeah, so everything back together. I'd have to, come on, there we go. And this is something that is true with a lot of devices. Sometimes uh, when you first reconnect the battery, if you just tap the power button lightly, it, it takes a second, like it doesn't initialize, it has to fill up the capacitors. So sometimes you have to press the power button twice, even if you know you fully assembled everything correctly. Hey, there we are, everything's happy. Woohoo, we made it. If you followed these instructions exactly, hopefully you have a working laptop and not a Bob Ross painting, but if you have a Bob Ross painting, I'll buy it. 